This guy used to work on a tire shop at 12 years old. He started training kickboxing at 22. Looking back then, was so far to achieve a UFC championship. And now he's the undisputed middleweight champion of the world. Who not give up on our dreams. In just two months, the UFC have put on four truly massive marquee events. And now, on April 8th in Miami, Florida, we have yet another era-defining night of fights. Mixed martial arts at its finest. In the main event, we have a grudge match for the ages, a rivalry that stretches far beyond either man's MMA career, culminating in a contest between perhaps the two most elite strikers the sport has ever known. I'm such a sucker for a specialist. He is a specialist. I keep saying, man, I don't throw in hope. I aim and fire down the barrel. Alex Pereira and Israel Adesanya know each other quite well, but the numbers truly paint this rivalry in a way that doesn't fully do it justice. Fight two, or fight four, depending on how you look at it, promises to offer up perhaps the most definitive answer to the Pereira versus Adesanya question yet. Striking matchups don't come around much better than this one, folks. This battle right now is absolutely crucial. Fascinating chess match. In the co-main event, we have a stylistic pairing that may prove to be an even greater display of the full MMA skill set. Number five ranked welterweight Gilbert Burns takes on the BMF Jorge Masvidal, a high stakes fight that is guaranteed fireworks. Jorge, if you want to fight, just tell the day I'll fight you. On April 8th, I'm going to clean this box. I'm going to beat the brakes off that dude. Come along as we take a closer look into some of the best matchups the year has seen. I don't know what's going to happen, but I do know it's going to be fireworks. This is an inside look for UFC 287. A hunter is not a hunter. Gilbert Burns and Jorge Masvidal are a pair of modern-day welterweight greats who are both at something of a crossroads in their careers. It's the type of matchup that seems bound to produce the goods, a dream fight between two old-school heroes who somehow managed to stay out of each other's crosshairs up until now. After breaking through as a crossover star in a late career resurgence, Masvidal's fortunes took a turn for the worse after he first challenged for UFC gold. Losing to guys as good as Kamaru Usman and Colby Covington is nothing to be ashamed of, but to say that Jorge has had trouble replicating his peaks in 2019 would be an understatement. I don't mean to sound crude, but I just don't see Jorge Masvidal getting a shot at a title again. What does Masvidal need to do to revive his career? Beyond all the glitz and glamour of being one of the sport's biggest celebrities, beyond the controversies that have engulfed Masvidal's momentum in recent times, he remains one of the most supremely well-rounded fighters in the sport. I mean, he's a monster. He's a monster. He's hard for anybody to deal with. His striking is very crisp, very clean, and he's clever. Like, he sets traps. He can strike with the best of the best, handle himself on the map with his underrated grappling game, and when the going gets tough, Masvidal has proven himself to be a truly determined fighter. However, that billing also extends to his UFC 287 opponent, Gilbert Burns, a guy who ticks every single box that Jorge does. One of the best fighters in the welterweight division, a star of Brazil, knockout power, great jiu-jitsu. Coming off of his victory over Neil Magny, Burns doubled down on his status as one of the very best welterweights in the game, and his war with Kamzat Shamayev just before then showcased the dog in him like never before. Gilbert Burns just provided or reminded the world what a badass that he is. He just reminded the world that he's still capable of being a champ one day. Conventional wisdom might tell you that Burns will have the advantage in the grappling and Jorge will take the cake in the stand-up, but these two veterans of the fight game generally allow the flow of any given contest to take them wherever it will. And I know he's gonna talk a big game that's gonna come strike with me and all this BMF shit, but at the end of the day, I'm game bread. He's Gilbert. I'm gonna be at Super Saiyan, fuck somebody up mode, you know? I guess it's a very hard fight for him, you know, he's coming for three losses. It's a little, it's risk, it's a good reward if he beats him, if it's gonna be a good reward, but it's a big risk, uh, I think. It's a fight of major stakes, 
three rounds at UFC 287 may well decide the identity of the next welterweight title challenger, but at the very least, Burns vs. Masvidal looks like a frontrunner for Fight of the Night honors. But once the dust settles in the co-main, a fight of truly gargantuan proportions will follow. Fighting is a game that can be undeniably cruel. A sport where sometimes the most advanced or technically sound fighter isn't the one to get his hand raised. But in the long-standing rivalry between UFC middleweight champion Alex Pereira and his three-time adversary Israel Adesanya, the numbers are really starting to add up. There's an argument to be made that Israel was winning each of those fights up until, well, he wasn't. You could score their first kickboxing bout in his favor, and despite losing by highlight reel KO in their second, Izzy was dominating up until that point. History has a funny way of repeating itself, and despite coming in as a heavy favorite against the far less experienced Poetan in MMA, once again, Pereira found his mark when it matters most. Fucking crazy, isn't it? Like, similar to the last time, same story. Match these two guys up against the entire middleweight top 15 one by one, and few would argue that Adesanya will prevail more often than Pereira would. But here we are. Pereira stands over Adesanya with three wins, two finishes, and one more opportunity to get the better of the last style bender under the bright lights. He's the guy that has beaten him three times in a row now. Will it be four? And in a fight like this, it doesn't matter how long Pereira's been doing MMA, how long he has been training in the grappling and wrestling arts, it doesn't even matter how he matches up with guys like Robert Whittaker or Kamzat Shamayev. What matters here is that Poetan has proven himself to be completely and utterly capable of ending Israel Adesanya's career. And whether or not he's falling behind on the scorecards makes absolutely no difference. Fighting a point fight with a human battering ram like Alex Pereira has cost Israel dearly twice before. And coming into this second MMA fight, the questions over how Stylebender will approach this are truly fascinating. This ain't over. The game ain't over. I thought it was game over, but yeah. Putting the coin again, it'll play again. For as much as we know that Pereira can hurt and finish out Asanya, we also know that Israel can stun his opponent in return. Does he throw all caution to the wind and try to get Poetan out of there? Or does he sink further into a tactical mindset, doing his utmost to avoid any traps Pereira might set while simply building off the best parts of his last performance? I'm crazy, bro. You want this one? Yeah. You know in your heart you beat him the next time? I can beat him. I know I can beat him. You've seen I can beat him. This is an incredibly interesting matchup, and it is by no means a regular stylistic clash. This is about with the type of history that is not only rare for combat sports, but I would argue that it is totally unprecedented. I mean, they fought each other three times already in different sports, many years along the road. Adesanya left kickboxing just to get away from Pierre. The Pierre left kickboxing just to chase after Adesanya. These two guys met at the pinnacle of two distinct fighting art forms. And the guy who should have all of the advantages, the quote unquote better fighter, has been left totally washed by the fight by fight scoring. I actually feel bad for Izzy. Like, bro, you have your own personal boogeyman. How many times can you do everything right? And the dude's like, and hey, last second, ha ha ha, I win. The kickboxing of Pereira is indeed the perfect foil for Israel Adesanya. But even with his 0-3 record in mind, you wouldn't be crazy to pick the former champion to recapture his belt. With the numbers that are stacked in favor of one fighter, you'd be forgiven for discounting the guy with three losses. But here we are. Fight number four is just around the corner. And somehow, someway, we've been left with even more questions about these two and their matchup, especially in mixed martial arts. Technically, I think he's the better guy. Technically, I think he's faster, but the power of Pereira is the big thing that stands out. But what goes down in the rematch, you know? This is a genuinely compelling pay-per-view headliner, a massive title event for the sport that will no doubt elevate the winner's status by becoming the defining victory of their career to date. They gotta push all the chips in. They gotta save this right here for everything. Five rounds in the middleweight division with a lot more than just a gold belt on the line. This one has all the makings of a classic and thankfully, 
We don't have long to go now until we get to see it play out before our very eyes. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.